Welcome back, Mavadi Yogis. My name's Stephanie. I'll be walking you through a 60-minute Hatha class. In Hatha, we're going to be working today on doing lots of twists and folds. So in terms of props, I definitely recommend having two blocks or perhaps two hardcover textbooks can work. As well, at the end of our practice, we're going to be taking some supported poses. So maybe having a rolled up blanket or bolster if you have them at home, grabbing one of those and having them nearby. As well, having the mat is also crucial. The 60 minute class, we're going to work through the hips, a little bit of spine elongation and really working to twist off of that central axis. So when you're ready, coming to a seated position on your mat. How that seated pose looks for you, maybe ankles are crossed one in front of each other, maybe one ankle is tucked underneath, or perhaps using one of those blocks to stick underneath the hips so that you're seated up on the block and the knees fall open towards the earth, giving the hips a little bit more space to open up and relax rather than the knees crunching up towards the torso. And then from here, maybe moving some of that extra soft tissue out of the way and just settling into your practice. Perhaps the gaze softens, eyes might even close. Noticing the natural state of your breath, not attempting to take control, just observing the ebb and flow observing the state at which we arrived in our practice. Maybe that's in our pajamas at home from working or at the end of a busy day or busy week. Just acknowledging how the body and the mind feels. Creating that pause before we step through the door into our practice. Knowing that for these next 60 minutes, our true focus is simply on breathing, moving, and connecting into the present moment. Perhaps starting to lengthen our inhale to four or five seconds. And exhale, releasing out of the mouth. Finding a pause at the end of our inhale. Exhale, out of the mouth, releasing. Inhale, finding length through the spine, expanding the ribs in all four directions. Exhale, maintaining that length and integrity through the spine, through the torso. Any areas of tightness or soreness, breathing the exhale through that area, just bringing that sense of release into the knots, into the soreness. Noticing if we're holding the shoulders a little bit closer to the neck, can we create space for them to release down onto the back? Inhale, softly opening the eyes, bringing the gaze back to center. And we'll start with just a little twist through the neck at first. So inhale, finding length, like that string is drawing up through the crown of the head. And then exhale, gazing over the left shoulder, allowing that right one to stay anchored back. It's not dropping forwards to follow the gaze, maybe pressing the hand into the knee, opening the chest. Feeling a bit of a stretch across that right side. Inhale, coming back to center. Exhale, gaze over the right shoulder. Once again, the left one stays anchored, maybe pressing the left hand into the knee, giving a bit of resistance. Holding this twisting gaze. 
and then inhale back to center. We'll draw the hands up to heart center in prayer, starting out with a twist through the torso. But for once, we're not gonna use the arms to press us into that twist. We're gonna use solely our core and trunk muscles. So inhale, finding length always before our twist. Exhale, gaze towards the right side, starting to open that right shoulder. Using the core, can we twist, trying to bring those hands as close as we can towards the right. And exhale, holding here, feeling a bit of that strength, having to resist and pull us into the twist. Inhaling once more here. Exhale, release the chest and hands back to center. Reset. Inhale, finding length through the spine. Exhale, left side, gaze comes towards the left, and then the shoulders and hands follow finding a little bit of inner thigh engagement happening perhaps an outer thigh or hip on that left side pulling us into the twist holding it here and then inhale coming back to center release the hands down we'll do that same twist but using the hands planting down as we twist but see if we can find that core engagement and lift at the beginning so inhale finding length Exhale, start to twist towards the right, left hand onto the right knee, right fingertips reaching back. On our inhale, can we find some more of that length in our spine? Exhale, twisting deeper, finding that core hold ringing out through the abdominals. And then inhale, gaze comes back to center. Exhale, release the arms. Repeat, left side. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, twist, right hand to left knee. Left fingertips reaching back, opening up through the chest. Taking that deep belly breath in, filling up. Exhale, core control, coming maybe a bit deeper into the twist. We're just holding steady here. Inhale, gaze to center. Exhale, releasing the hands. We're gonna come into puppy pose next. So whether that's rolling over crossed ankles or sliding the feet to one side, we're gonna first come onto hands and knees, tabletop position. And then from here, making sure the knees are just a little bit past the center line of the mat. And then start to walk the hands down, melting heart and chest down onto the mat. Forehead can touch down here, pressing into the hips or stacking over top of the knees. If the shoulders feel open and the neck comfortable, perhaps bringing the gaze up towards the hands and letting the chin rest down here. Really focusing on stretching through the thoracic spine here. It's a little bit hard to talk with your chin on the mat. So bringing that stretch into the upper body, can the heart really melt, opening, creating space across the belly, those lowest ribs on the front, stretching away from the hips. Seeing if we can surrender into the stretch here. Inhale, pressing into the palms, starting to rise up. Walk the hands back underneath the shoulders, coming back to tabletop position. We're gonna thread the needle here. So flowing with the breath two times and then holding our position. So right hand under the right shoulder, knees about hip width apart, tops the feet flat. Inhale, sweep the left arm up and overhead, twisting over towards that left side. Exhale, sweep the left arm underneath, behind that right wrist, bending into the right elbow so that the left shoulder and ear come down on the mat. Inhale, sweeping left arm back up. Exhale, sliding it under, bend into that right elbow. Last one, we're gonna hold it. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, holding here, feeling some of that core and oblique work to open up. 
and then exhale, slide that left hand down. Palm is facing up as we lower the left ear and shoulder down onto the mat. So right hand can be just in front of the face, wrist is at 90 degrees, elbow at 90 degrees, or perhaps walking that right hand overhead towards the top of the mat. Rolling the chest open with the hand reaching overhead. Or maybe a half bind, reaching right arm up towards the ceiling. And then twisting so that palm and forearm press across the low back, fingertips reaching. If we brought the right hand up, let's place it back down in front of the face. On an inhale, rise back up to table, pressing the hands down, repeating on the other side now. So left hand under left shoulder. Inhale, sweep the right arm up towards the ceiling. Exhale, scooping under, bend into that left elbow. Inhale once more, floating right arm up. Exhale, diving under. Once more, holding this time. Inhale, right arm lifts up, twisting open towards that right side. Feeling again the obliques on the other side, helping us twist and lift. Exhale, diving down, right ear, right shoulder coming down onto the mat. Top of the right palm pressing down into our mat. Left hand can stay pressing into the mat just in front of our face, rolling the chest open. Or perhaps left hand reaching overhead, feeling a little side body lengthening. Or reaching left arm up and then flipping the grip so that the back of the palm and back of the forearm come into a half bind, sneaking around that right hip. Walking the knees back perhaps to find a little bit more space between the torso and the thighs. Inhale, bring that left palm back down if it's not already under the face. And then exhale, bracing through the core, lifting back up into our tabletop position. We're gonna curl the toes under, coming into our first downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Shavasana. Curl the toes, start to lift the knees, and instead of pressing back into our downward facing dog, let's really focus on lifting the hips and the chest up, and then slowly coming over the balls of the feet, resting into downward facing dog. Now if it's the first down dog of the day for you, legs might be feeling a little bit tight, feel free to pedal out the legs, alternating one leg straight, one leg bent. One of my favorites, bending deep into the knees, inhale, lifting the heels up, finding length through the legs, and then exhale, slowly bring the heels back down. On our next inhale, bend the knees, gazing up at the hands. Look at the distance between the feet and the hands. I want you to step one foot halfway of that distance and then the other foot. So we're standing about halfway on our mat. Walk the hands the rest of the distance in towards the feet, coming into a forward fold position. Inhale one time, lifting up, focusing on extension through the spine. So whether fingertips are on the mat or coming onto the shin, finding that length. And then exhale, bowing down. Maybe a gentle bend in the legs, really letting gravity pull the head down towards the mat. Extending through the legs where it's possible. Maybe not focusing on that straight lock leg position, but simply engaging some of the leg muscles on the front body, those quadriceps pulling us to fold, telling the hamstrings to release. Inhale, halfway lift, pausing here. Our next breath in, we rise all the way up into mountain pose, arms stay by the sides as we arrive. Stepping one foot, then the other to the top of the mat, coming into our mountain pose. We're gonna warm up a little bit more now that we've got some of the joints and wrists moving. Now we're gonna increase the heart rate a bit with sun salutations. So Surya Namaskar A, 
twice, going a little bit slower in the first round, a little bit faster between the movements on our second, and then we'll do one round of Surya Namaskar B, so incorporating warrior two and chair pose. So from our mountain position, we'll let the hands rest by the sides, palms facing forward, Samastitihi. Here we go. Inhale, sweeping the arms up overhead, maybe palms come together. Exhale, forward fold, coming down. Inhale, halfway, that extension lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step the right foot back and then the left into plank position. Knowing that your plank might look like knees down, building that upper body strength. Exhale, bend the elbows, chaturanga, we'll lower all the way down. Our back bending options, we can inhale, lifting into cobra, elbows are bent. Or perhaps lifting up onto the tops of the feet, thighs and hips raise up into upward facing dog. We're gonna do a little twist, either version of our back bend. Exhale, gaze comes over the right shoulder. Feeling a little side body stretch. We'll be chasing it throughout practice. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, gaze over that left shoulder. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, knees come down into tabletop. And then inhale, curl the toes, lifting to downward facing dog. Noticing with our open shoulders, is it possible to really melt the heart down, thinking like puppy pose, having the heart and chest melt down between the arms. If we're able to get that accentuated curve in the back, knowing that we actually wanna build more strength in this position. So see if we can tone the front body and lift the heart up a bit pressing and engaging those inner thighs as if they could reach back and pull the hips with us, supporting more of the weight out of our hands. Feeling stacking and strength from that stacking through the joints of the arms, not dumping into the heels of the hands. Inhale, bend the knees, gaze comes towards the hands. Step the left foot forward and then the right to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweeping arms up along the sides, overhead. Exhale, palms come down through heart center. Return once more, Samastitihi. We'll go once more, but a little bit faster through the vinyasa portion, still holding our down dog. So maybe this time, instead of starting with the movement of arms sweeping out, see if we can inhale, press the hands down, and then scooping, reaching up, baby back bend. Exhale, forward fold, coming down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, left foot steps back, and then the right into plank. Chaturanga, exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale, peeling up for your back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. We're gonna hold here for five breath yogis. So settling in that deep inhalation through the nose. Exhaling out of the mouth. Seeing if we can lift up, not just that pressing back action, but coupling it with a lift as if there was a sling, maybe if you've done some anti-gravity yoga, having that sling under the front of the hips, lifting us up and back. If the heels are floating up off of the mat, feel free to take a bend into the knees, creating some softening in the hamstrings, maybe lowering them ever so slightly, and then just a slight engagement of the thighs and knees as if we were gonna lengthen, just slowly building some space into the posterior chain. Inhale, bend the knees, gaze comes forward, step the right foot forward, and then the left to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, bow. Inhale, sweeping arms up overhead. Exhale, palms come down through heart center. Samastitihi. So now Surya Namaskar B, incorporating a warrior pose in. So on the inhale, sweeping, bending the knees, fingertips sweep by the sides like a depth check for knowing how low we should go. Inhale, rising up, Utkatasana, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold, hips come up, head and heart come down. Inhale, halfway lengthen. Exhale, plant the hands, step, walk, or maybe hop the feet back. 
into plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, peeling up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Pivot that left heel down. Step the right foot forward in between the hands. Warrior one. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, pausing here. Exhale, forward fold, coming down. Step that right foot back and we drag out our exhale. Inhale, peeling up. Exhale, downward facing dog, right heel pivots in, left foot comes forward. Inhale, rising up, hands overhead. Exhale, forward fold, that long breath, can it last us all the way down? Inhale, peeling up. Exhale, downward facing dog. This time we're gonna be holding that down dog position for five breaths, noticing the effect and difference on the heart rate here. If it's ever feeling a little too intense to be in downward facing dog, know that we can always replace it with our puppy pose version, moving through a vinyasa, or even child's pose is there for you. Joining back in the practice whenever you're ready. Inhale, bend the knees, gaze comes forward. Step, walk or hop those feet to meet the hands at the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bow down. Chair pose, sweep the hands along the feet, bend the knees. Inhale, rising up, arms overhead. Exhale, stand up, mountain pose. So we'll start working through our standing sequence of poses now. So from here, inhale, pushing the arms down and then scooping up, baby back bend as the biceps come in front of the chin. Exhale, forward fold, coming down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step the right foot back as far as we can, prepping for warrior two. So right foot parallel with the short side of the mat. Inhale, right arm draws us up into Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. Gaze comes over that left hand. Noticing if we're not really able to get deep into that front leg bend, maybe shortening our stance up slightly, seeing how that feels, and then bowing down. If we find the knee is really coming forward over the toes, walk that front foot out just a little bit. Hands can always come down onto the waist if it's feeling intense on the upper body, supporting our arms. A little bit of outer hip engagement, pulling the knee to track so that we can see our big toe. And then right hand comes onto the right hip. Inhale, reaching that left arm up and we start to extend the left leg. Maybe right arm slides down the right leg. Reverse warrior. Exhale, left arm comes back forward. Keep the left leg bent. Arms are back to that warrior two position. We're gonna come into triangle pose, trikonasana. Inhale, reaching that left arm forward, starting to roll that left hip underneath. The right is pulling on top. And then exhale, release. Left hand can come back of the palm against the inner shin. We can brace forearm on thigh. Maybe grabbing our block and placing it on the outside of the left leg. We can brace on top of the ankle as well. Or maybe fingertips reaching down onto the mat. Finding a stable placement for that bottom hand is key. And then we can focus on that revolved upper body. Right hand remaining up. Maybe coming onto the hip and letting that elbow and shoulder roll back a bit. When we raise the arm up, sometimes we'll have a tendency to roll in. Can we flip that palm forward towards the screen like you're gonna get a big high five? And then exhale, release the gaze down towards that bottom leg. Slight micro bend into the knee. Inhale, right arm draws us back up, warrior two. We're gonna sweep forward to warrior one. So a slight adjustment in the stance. We're gonna bring that right foot forward and put it on more of a diagonal rather than this perpendicular, moving it up. So on an inhale, sweeping the arms and hips forward. Exhale, settling down into that warrior one that we just did in Surya Namaskar B. So really working, extending, maybe feeling that stretch through the right calf. 
Arms reach up, bending into that left leg. And then inhale, hands come to heart center. We'll straighten the left leg once more. We're going to come into pyramid pose where we'll fold forward. So options to release the hands down onto blocks or onto the shin and thigh. Or maybe adding a bit of challenge, working the leg muscles here. We can sweep the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers, grabbing opposite elbows, squaring the chest and shoulders forward, whichever version, hands interlaced or hands on hips. Inhale, finding length. Exhale, start to bow forward. So intentionally trying to keep that right heel planted down. That left hamstring feels a little tight. Finding that point where we go from a nice flat back to a rounded one. Seeing if we can keep that length and putting the support. Maybe blocks under the hands. One hand on chin, one hand on thigh. Or bringing the hands behind the back. Focusing on the legs having to stretch and open. Draw that left leg into the hip socket, right hip rolls forward. Inhale, coming up halfway. Let's release the hands down if they were still behind the back. If fingertips can reach down to the floor, fantastic. If we were bracing on the leg or using blocks, I encourage placing a block underneath that right hand. And we're going to come into revolve triangle. So the hips are squaring forward. Inhale, left hand can draw up to the heart center. Can come onto that left hip, rolling the chest open. Or maybe that final expression of lifting left arm towards the ceiling. Maybe you can see that I've got the little wobbles here too. It's a deep extension and lengthening happening through that left side. Can the breath give us some stability? through the core for our focus and then exhale left hand coming back down we'll slide the block out of the way stepping that left foot back into plank position chaturanga exhale lower down inhale peeling up exhale downward facing dog Inhale, bending the knees, looking at the hands. Step, hopper, walk the feet forward to meet the hands at the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive, coming all the way up. Exhale, palms come through, heart center. Release by the side, samastitihi. We'll repeat on the other side here. So pressing down and then inhale to scoop up. Exhale, forward fold, coming down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, stepping the left foot back, warrior two. So pivoting the toes towards that left side, the outside edge of the left foot parallel with the short side. Knowing that we can either have the heels in alignment or maybe right heel aligned with the left arch, adding challenge or we can have them in ski tracks side by side, widening our stance a bit more stability. Inhale, left arm and the breath draws us up. Exhale, release right hand forward, palm facing down. Same for the left. Finding that depth into our lunge, maybe some little pulses, some little adjustments coming into stillness here as we sink lower having to engage the inner thigh as well as outer hip muscles stabilizing through our front leg can we imagine that we could tear our mat apart right down the middle pressing the feet out in opposite directions core strong noticing are we leaning forward or leaning back can we find the shoulders to be stacked over top of the waist and then let the left hand slide down, left leg, right palm flips up. Inhale, reverse warrior, straightening that left leg, right leg. Exhale, right arm comes back to forward, left hand raises, but that leg is still bent. Trikonasana on the other side. Inhale, right arm reaching forward, that right hip is rolling under. 
And then on an exhale, we can release right hand to shin, forearm to thigh, right hand onto a block, or maybe fingertips touching down, left arm reaching up towards the ceiling, really feeling some intensity of the stretch across this left hip as we're rolling the chest open. If balance is feeling a little elusive today, we can always take this pose against a wall behind us, really feeling the hips and shoulders rolling to stack on that flat surface. Gaze can be up high towards the hand or straight over towards the left side, whatever's more comfortable for your neck. And then inhale, release the gaze down, micro bend in the right knee. Inhale, sweeping the arms up, chest faces forward, and we step that left foot a little bit closer, settling into our warrior one position, right leg is forward, left leg extending back. Arms can be apart like this, engaging, squeezing biceps together, or maybe sweep the biceps under the chin, gaze comes up. Exhale, release the arms down by the sides. Preparing for our pyramid pose on the other side. Hands can interlace, grab opposite elbows, or stay on the waist to reach forward. Inhale, lengthening through the chest, straightening the front leg. If you're feeling some pain in the ankle on the back side of the right foot, step it a little bit closer. Right now, we're doing a big flex through the back of the ankle. Inhale for length. Exhale, start to hinge forward. I like to start with the right hand on the hip because I can really feel it pull back and hinge through the right side. Once we feel that if we go any lower, we're gonna round the spine down, pausing at that edge, that point of length and staying here. Can we really draw that right hip back? Left hip comes forward to compensate and then allowing the chest and chin to connect, bowing forward. Inhale, gaze starts to lift. We're gonna come into revolve triangle. So left hand, if it is comfortably down on the mat here, maybe it stays. Otherwise, if we were bracing on that right leg or on blocks, we're definitely gonna keep a block under the left hand. And from this position of chest being squared forward, inhale like we're drawing a bow on that right side, rolling the chest open. And then from here, right hand can come on the right hip rolling that elbow back and the chest, or maybe reaching up towards the ceiling, our revolved triangle, a closed twist as we're twisting towards that inner right thigh. And then exhale, right hand floats down. Again, that micro bend in the knee, protecting the joint. Slide the block out to the side, lifting up onto the ball of the left foot. Can we slide the right foot back into plank? Chaturanga, lower down. Inhale, peeling up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Taking a few inhales and exhales, noticing I'm pedaling out the legs here, being gentle with the back of the ankles, seeing how they're feeling after some deep flexion. And then bring big toes to touch. Inhale, right leg, reaching up towards the ceiling. Three-legged down dog. Exhale, bending at the knee. Opening up, stacking the hips. That right knee reaching towards the ceiling. Inhale once more to lengthen the right leg back. Hips square forward. Exhale, let's bring that right foot forward in between the hands. High lunge this time on the ball of the back foot. Inhale. Reaching up, exhale, pausing here. Noticing if that left leg is really demanding, we twist and jack the hips up. If we bend into the left leg, square the hips forward and then extend through the heel, finding more control in our pose. We're gonna come into a twist here. So two options like in our seated twist, we can keep hands at heart center and open with just the core 
or maybe opening the arms up as we twist. Either way, hands at heart center or arms overhead, we inhale to find length and then exhale, twisting towards the right. Hands can stay at heart center or maybe reaching out in opposite directions, palms facing the right, thumbs are pointing up. If we wanna layer on a bit of challenge, perhaps putting a smile on your face and bringing the gaze backwards towards that right hand. Smiling through the challenge here. And then inhale, rising back up, high lunge, face forward. Exhale, bowing down over the right leg, coming into a runner's lunge. We're gonna come into warrior three with hands down. So as we bend here, walk the fingertips out as far as they can, knowing we can always bring our blocks as well to place under the hands. Inhale, shift the weight into the right leg. Hands should now be positioned under the shoulders. And inhale as we lengthen and root down through the right leg, lifting the left leg back. We're gonna come forward into mountain pose from here, drawing that left knee in front. So little bend in the right leg. Inhale, we start to rise up, drawing the left leg through. Coming up thigh, parallel with hip height, flex through that left foot. Hands are at heart center. From here, coming into a revolve twist. So many twists and folds today. So right hand can come outside of the left knee. Draw the left hand back towards the hip as if drawing a bow, opening up towards the left. Maybe reach that left hand back behind us once more. Fingers can be extended or pull the fingers in, giving just the thumbs up. A little bit more arm strength here. Inhale, come back to the front. Reach the arms up overhead. Exhale, warrior three. So start to hinge forward while reaching the left leg back. Maybe hands stay up at heart center this time or they touch back down onto the mat. Just because you choose an option, we don't have to stay there. Maybe hands come down and then we start to float them back up once more, feeling some more support. On an exhale, can we gently, slowly touch back down into our high lunge? Inhale, the successful landing, come up to high lunge. Exhale, folding down into plank. No vinyasa here, downward facing dog, pulling the hips up and back. Repeating on the other side. Inhale, left leg reaching up towards the ceiling. Exhale, bend at the knee, rolling, stacking the hips open, left knee reaching. Inhale, bring the hips back to the front, reach that left leg back. Exhale, stepping it forward in between the hands, that runner's lunge position, left leg forward. When you're ready, inhale, rising up. Exhale, pause, adjusting here. Maybe arms are overhead. Again, we can do that little adjustment, bending the right leg and then working on extending through the heel. Inhale, finding length. Exhale, twist towards the left side. Maybe hands start in prayer and then opening up at shoulder height. Again, if we want to layer that challenge of bringing the gaze back, challenging our balance, putting a smile on our face, and then looking back towards the left hand. Not forgetting about that left leg. Can we still find our bend? Inhale, sweeping arms up overhead. We come forward. Exhale, bow down over the front leg. Inhale, walking the hands forward, stacking onto that left leg. Inhale, as we root down into the heel, right leg floats up. It's not dead weight though. We're hugging the muscles onto the bones of that right leg. Heel pressing and lifting up. We're gonna come forward into mountain. Inhale, slowly rise up. Maybe arms reaching overhead as we bring that right knee forward. Thighs parallel with the floor at hip height. Exhale, we can release hands down, heart center. Coming into our revolve twist here. So placing the left hand outside of the right knee. Inhale, draw that right hand along the thigh, back to the hip. Opening up towards the right side. 
And then exhale, releasing perhaps the right hand back or keeping it connected onto the thigh. We can stay here, gaze is towards the right or maybe that challenge, thumbs up at the back and we start to bring the gaze backwards towards the back hand. It can be tough as one eye gets blocked by the nose looking back. Start to challenge our balance. Noticing if the shoulder is hugging in. See if we can reach it back down. Reaching through those knuckles, pressing back. Inhale, arms raise up overhead forward. Warrior three, Virabhadrasana three, here we go. Exhale, start to hinge forward. Remember, hands can touch down or maybe stay at heart center, hugging everything in nice and tight, like a little package floating here. Or maybe arms reach out in airplane mode. Exhale, slowly bend gently into the left knee, touching down into a high lunge. Inhale, victory is ours with that landing. Exhale, folding down, step that left foot back to plank. Exhale, lifting the hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Taking one full inhale and exhale. Once more, breathing in through the nose and release. We're gonna come down into seated. So option to come down onto hands and knees, sliding the feet over, or maybe practicing a little bit of our jump through position to seated. So hands are a little bit wider than the shoulder width. Bending the knees on an inhale, gaze comes forward. And on that exhale, start to bring the knees forward. We're probably gonna land on the tops of the feet, cross the ankles, pulling the legs through, and then coming down onto our seat. Bring the legs out in front, however you got there. We're seated now. We're gonna come into Navasana, boat pose, two times here. So option to keep the feet planted down as we find that positioning on our sits bones. So not rolling the pelvis under here. I can feel my tailbone crunching. Finding some length coming forward. Maybe opening the thighs and legs apart to find that balance point, that nice length. Like I said, for our boat pose, we can have feet down, hands holding under the thighs or maybe arms float forward for some challenge. We could bring the feet up onto just the big toes, or maybe floating one shin up at a time as we count to five, or maybe floating both shins. So from here, arms reach forward or hold onto the thighs. We're gonna inhale for one, two, three, four, Five, bring the feet down a little bit more firmly. If we didn't feel a lot of core engagement there, we're gonna try once more. So I invite you to maybe lift one leg at a time for a two and a half count. Or maybe if we're holding on with the back of the thighs, bring both shins up, squeezing the legs together. And we'll go for one, two, three. Maybe try letting go, four, five. And bring the feet back down. So after all of that folding and twisting, we're gonna open up the front body a bit. So extend the legs down in front, thighs and knees touching, toes pointing up. We're gonna bring the hands behind the back. So fingertips are pointing towards our feet. Bring the hands down onto the mat so you've got a bit of a lean coming back. We're gonna come into reverse plank. So lifting the hips forward and pointing the toes. Maybe the toes will be able to come all the way down. On an inhale, pressing into the hands, hips lift up. Can the glutes fire? Opening, pulling up. Quite the chest and shoulder opener here. For four, three, hug the legs in, lifting up, two, one. Exhale, bring the hips down. Stacking shoulders and spine over top. Toes pointing up coming into staff pose. So hands are now that same positioning, but beside the hip, pressing down into the hands, but not actually lifting up if you have monkey arms like me. Just a gentle press in activation more of lifting the chest up through pure muscle, flexing the feet, engaging through the legs here. Every muscle is activating, firing, pulling in, even the elbows are pulling in. 
and then exhale, release. We're gonna come into Hashimotanasana or forward fold. So legs are already in position. If the hips have been having a bit of tightness still, we can grab a block, slide it underneath the hips, perhaps helping us come into our forward fold. So legs are extending, maybe grabbing a strap as well. If we find the pelvis doesn't want to tilt forward, but rather is making us round, extend your grip, grabbing a strap and wrapping it around the feet or a scarf or a belt, even a sweater or a shirt, anything that can wrap around the soles of the feet and extend our grip. We'll inhale, finding length through the shoulders. Exhale, start to hinge forward, really trying to draw the legs underneath as we, as we fold forward through the pelvis. Hands can fold onto the ankles, maybe peace fingers on the big toe. If we're able to hold onto the feet or big toes, thumbs point up and see if we can get a little bit of a bend in the elbows, a little bit of a pulling forward. Core and belly is drawing up towards the spine. Hip flexors and quads are engaged, pulling us down, allowing the chin at the very end to come towards the chest, rounding through the back. Every exhale, perhaps softening, being able to come a little bit lower. Inhale, bring the gaze up, just finding some length. And then exhale, bowing down. Inhale, rising up, releasing feet or ankle. And then we're coming into a really juicy side stretch that I love that really targets our QL, which is a muscle that wraps from the spine across the top of the hip and down into the groin area. So if we sit a lot during the day in cars or at desks, this is typically the muscle that will lock up and give us a little bit of pain. So coming into Janu Sirsasana A, meaning we're gonna pull this right heel up in towards our seat, knee falling open, sole of the right foot pressing into the thigh. We can do this seated on a block as well. And instead of our traditional bowing forwards as we would in this pose, I want you to bring your left elbow, pressing it against the inside of the left knee. Now maybe just the left palm touches down, or we've got some space and mobility to bring the forearm down onto the mat. As we start to do this forward reach with the right hip being an external rotation, we start to feel a little bit of a stretch here perhaps. So we can stay in this position, pressing the back of the left arm into the leg, really rolling the chest open, feeling that intensity start to creep up. If we're looking, and we want to feel a little bit more, perhaps trying to reach the right arm overhead. Bend at the elbow and just cradle the back of the head where it meets the neck. And then inhale, lifting that elbow towards the ceiling, bringing a bit more of that revolving motion into the upper body, into the chest, feeling it through that side body stretch. Hopefully it feels pretty good right now. Remember that left palm is pressing up, but we're actively pressing elbow into the leg. And then inhale, look back down towards that left leg, squaring the chest forward. Exhale to hold here. Inhale, coming back up. And then extend the right leg out. Draw that left heel in towards our seat, maybe giving some assist at the end, pressing the foot against the inner thigh active through that right leg, toes reach up. We'll start to come forward, right elbow pressing in against that right knee, but not rolling the leg open. We're still active, pressing the calf and thigh down. Right hand and forearm come down, starting that revolving opening position, feeling it through the low back. We can stay here, keeping that active pressing of leg into arm and arm into leg or maybe left arm can reach up as well, cradling the back of the head where it meets the spine, and then opening up, trying to create room for the gaze and the head to look up, lifting the elbow out of the way, intensifying that side body stretch. If we're seated on a block for this, instead of elbow pressing inside of the knee, maybe that just looks like arm extending down to reach the floor inside, on that right arm, I should say. 
Inhale, release the left arm, chest comes forward. Exhale, holding here in a little fold. Inhale, walking back up. Exhale, extending the legs. Now, if you're lucky enough at home to be near a wall, we can take our next pose, legs up the wall, at the actual wall. Or if we're in the middle of a room, we can roll down onto our backs. And then place the block underneath the hips. So bringing the soles of the feet down onto the mat, heels as close as we can once we're reclined down. Pressing into the feet, lifting the hips, perhaps sliding the block underneath. Not so high up that it's impinging on the low back. Directly underneath the flat back of the pelvis. And then simultaneously lift both legs up, knees bent. And then extending heels up towards the ceiling. Giving our circulatory system and heart a little bit of a break. Gravity is helping. Pull the breath. Pull the breath, circulate the blood back down towards the heart. If shoulder stand is in your practice or you don't have any shoulder or cervical spine injuries, perhaps bending at the knees, bringing the feet back down, lifting the hips, sliding the block out of the way, bringing arms by the side. We'll inhale, lifting the hips as if we're coming into bridge. Maybe bridge sounds like it'd be a great stretch right now and you can join us through to this point. Lifting the hips up, pressing into the feet, allowing the spine to round, bringing it into the upper back. Chest comes close towards the chin. If we're moving towards shoulder stand, start to walk the shoulder blades in here. Maybe arms are interlacing behind the back. As we walk the shoulders in, you feel a bit of elevation, natural protection for the vertebrae and the cervical spine. Hips lift, and then exhale, slowly letting the hips lower down onto the arms in this position, only temporarily. Bring the knees into the chest, and it's gonna be a core engaged pelvic lift that's gonna thrust the hips up, and then as they lift, we're gonna meet the low back with the hands. So knees are tucked in like a little cannonball package. On an exhale, lifting the hips up, bend at the elbows, bring those hands on to the low back, walking them as far up the spine as we can, and then extending, pointing the toes, reaching the legs up towards the ceiling, pressing the backs of the arms into the mat. You can hear from my voice, the chest is quite close. So maybe doing bridge pose as well can help us work into here. Whenever you're ready to come down, tucking the knees down first and gently rolling onto the back. So from here, bending the knees, bringing the thighs closer towards the chest and then slowly sliding the heels over the bum down towards the thighs, rolling back down, flat onto the mat. Whichever version you're in, legs up the wall, bridge or shoulder stand, we'll come back down, flat spine on the mat. Bring the feet a little bit wider than hip width, soles of the feet still down, knees bent. We're just gonna windshield wiper the knees, side to side. Maybe hearing some snap, crackle pop. Just some of the fluid in the joint. Working out the air bubbles. And then coming back to stillness. Our final pose for practice. Perhaps supported fish or simply bound angle. If we want to keep the spine flat, we're going to bring soles of the feet together, letting the knees fall open into a diamond shape. Bound angle. I like to always layer it with the support. Press into the elbows, coming onto the forearms, rising up to seated. Grab a block, a rolled up towel, or a bolster perhaps, placing it underneath the spine. Making sure again, it's not pinching into the low back, not cutting into the cervical spine. If the drop you see here is a little too intense for the head, grab a second block book pillow, placing it underneath so the head doesn't come as far down. If it feels okay to open up to this vulnerability, letting the heart open and then arms along the sides, palms face up. And as I've just said, fully surrender into the pose. 
into. Sometimes this fear we have of being intimate and so open to the moment and what will come, what might arise out of us emotionally. Seeing if we can let that fear and that tension go and simply exist. Allowing waves to roll over us. Allowing our emotions to be felt. Oftentimes when we ignore feelings or emotions, compartmentalizing them and burying them down, they start to manifest themselves as tension or pain in our bodies. Emotions are meant to be felt fully and completely and then as they are felt, released from the body. When we deny them or when we bury them down, that's when they start to hole up and stagnate and create that tension. Let them be felt, be vulnerable to that moment. And let them leave the body. pose of the practice, staying here. body, awareness of your breath, taking a longer inhale and deeper exhale. Perhaps on your inhale, reaching the arms overhead like that early morning stretch from your fingers to your toes. On an exhale, drawing the knees into the chest, wrapping the arms, lifting head and shoulders up, giving yourself one last great big squeeze. And then maybe rolling over to one side in keto pose or rocking and rolling forward and back to come into a comfortable seated pose, ending practice just as we started. Knowing that time invested in self-care is always time well spent. That by making yourself and your care a priority, you're ensuring that you're your happiest and healthiest self, not just for you, but those you love as well. Namaste.